Hi everyone, welcome back. I thought I'd just give you a quick update on the GT185 project. I've been pretty busy lately, although I haven't been doing a lot of filming, so uh, you do get a lot more done when you're not filming. But anyway, it's time for an update, so uh, I'll give you a quick look around. Okay, start with the engine. It is all but complete, but this little thing you may remember from last time well you wouldn't have seen that because it was missing but <laughs> I've managed to get another one so it shouldn't be too much problem most of this stuff is pretty much just take the side covers off pull the bolts and this will just drop away sounds good in theory We'll test it out real soon. And <clears throat> then that's kind of it for that. So that could just about go in, back into the frame. So carbies, not sure if I've shown them, but I'm showing them now. They're all blasted. I've got carby kits just arrived. So I don't want to lose that. They'll be built and installed. I managed to buy, it's hard to see that, some more of these. So they pretty much go on there and there. Yep. So the old ones are rock hard and these are these are really good, brand new, so well brand new, who knows how old, but they're still as long as they do that, then that means they're gonna seal when I clamp them. So that's really look looking really good. Oil pump and lines are done. Let's try and get a little bit more light in there. Just waiting for the gasket. Oh, that's hard to see. Yeah, between the body and the top here. Waiting for a gasket to go in there. And uh, that's pretty much it. That engine's ready to go. Right, this is the frame and where we're at with it. It's all looking pretty good. I've just got those side covers on. All that stuff in there is all done. A lot of time, every single nut and bolt that you put in there has to be cleaned, painted otherwise you're putting rusty, dirty stuff on a nice clean frame it's just, you know, why do it? so it's very labour intensive put the tank going on here so Getting some body work done on that. That was dented in there. I've managed to pop a dent out from there. You can still see a little bit of rippling going on, but that's so much better than it was. So, uh, looking good there. Bit of elbow grease to uh, get that profile right, but it's coming along. To replace that tank is, oh, I don't know. If you can get one, we're looking at maybe $400 roundabout. So uh, I just figured I'd go with what I've got and see what I can make of it. It's still, at the end of the day, it's going to be functional. So however it looks is how much effort I put into it. So we'll see how that turns out. But I got pretty, pretty confident it's going to look half decent. So yeah, 
Well, you got to give it a go, don't you? So, see if we can see down in there. Mm, hard work seeing down in there, but it's reasonable. Well, it's pretty good actually. I've, I'm determined to get a better look at it, a better view. No, that's not happening. Anyway, take my word for it. It's pretty good in there. I use some um, apple cider vinegar. I got a tip from, I uh, can't remember who it is now, off uh, YouTube. So give it a go. It actually worked really well. So I will be lining the tank. So I've got this kit here. And uh, it comes with a cleaner. A rust converter, I'm guessing, that uh, would etch the metal inside. Not that it needs too much etching. It's <laughs> pretty pitted and that in there, but you get the idea. And then finish off with the sealer. Try and get rid of that glare. Working? No, half oh, sort of. Anyway, you can see what that is. So that will. That's that thick, goopy stuff that. Um, you tip in there, turn it round and round and round until it coats everything and then let the remainder run out. And that will seal off everything. So regardless of what's in there now, which um, it used to be pretty bad, pretty scungy in there. So like I say, before I got put onto this stuff, I uh, actually I'll just get some and show you this stuff. It works really well on rusty tanks. So the trick is once it's done its work is to stop it flash rusting again. So um, yeah, some WD-40 did the trick for me. But uh, I think this is the ultimate. A little bit pricey. That lot there you can buy in a kit and it's the it's the glare, it's the 500ml one, that's probably about between 80 to $85 at the time I bought it. So I'm going to try and do more than one tank with it. I'm not sure, I mean this, this stuff here is supposed to cure in the air, so my plan is to get at least a, one more tank ready with this stuff. Tip this and this one tip that in and then when it comes out tip it straight in the other one before it sets and <laughs> if it's still runny after that and depending on how much is left I've got a third tank I'm gonna have a go at so let's see if I can maximize that right so I thought the tank was a disaster <clears throat> and the engine well they were but uh, this thing just doesn't give in without a fight. This is the, the seat. So that's what was left of it. It's uh, The base is not on there at the moment. I'll show you that in a sec. But they were riding it like that. So pretty much the vinyl disappeared off this front part. Whoever was riding it just kept riding it. And as you can see, they just scalloped out more and more and more. And... Uh, so yeah so I mean you can buy these covers that's no problem can't really save that but if that's the most I have to spend on it but uh, I'm hoping that I might be able to take this down to the foam place and they can sort of carve that out to a uh, some kind of a shape and then make a piece to fit in there and we'll glue it down that's my hope we'll soon see how that turns out I've seen another foam for sale but it's whew, the price just about made me fall over so we're talking $300 or something like that a cover approaching 100 so you can see this is going to turn out 
possibly very very expensive so I'm just going to see if I can um, cheap it but not bodgy it it's going to you know be a decent solution um, and something that will be comfortable and last so uh, you don't always have to just you know throw your money at brand new parts when you can kind of reconstitute old ones so I've never had to do this before um, but it's a learning experience so uh, as time goes along I'll let you know what happens so just when you thought it was all the tragedy was over this is the bottom and it is tragic now I've wire wheeled this and I've treated it with I'm just reaching to get it this uh, rust converter so that's one of my best friends while doing this bike at the moment that and a few other products but um, let me just take a seat here this thing is just a mess it doesn't look too bad like that but uh, let me just hold it up to the light yep Swiss cheese it is just <laughs> some of those bigger holes are meant to be there like that one that one and those ones but not those not that not those all those so you can see it's actually just rotted away and this here is completely broken it's got a crack there but I've managed to close that up a bit I'll just try and match those lines up a little more put a tack of weld on that um got cut out there but we'll just see i've got a welder i've got a grinder i've got some sheet metal so it's when you've got something this big you just pick away pick away you know like straight away like i'm saying it's easy just to make a little piece to go along there and just weld it in because good metal good metal and that'll put it back together and then you know so that's that then we'll just go to here, see what we can do, and work our way along and just work it out. If it comes to it, I might even just put some fiberglass filler in there just to give it a little bit of something. Anyway, that's the seat. Wish me luck with that one. So I've been pulling the wheels apart as far as the brakes. Actually, that's not the brakes. That's the uh, sprocket side. And there's, there's the carrier. It's all in good condition. There's nothing broken or anything. So, uh, But it's corroded to hell. Look at the state of that. And that's what the engine looked like. So that was kind of before. And uh, the light's not the best, but that's a bit of a before and an after. So... I'm kind of in two minds what to do with this. You can see the spokes are a bit rusty as well. So, but I mean, I can get that carrier blasted. I can get this brake plate blasted. That's just a mess in there, but that'll come up spotless. And in there, it's just ugly. But that'll come up bright and shiny as well. So... I'm just, I don't want to break this wheel apart. Ideally, if I had a bigger budget, I'd just pull this apart, get this blasted, get it polished, buy some new spokes, buy a new rim. Uh, but the money I spent on that, I could redo all the brakes and the whole lot. So, yeah, don't want to be doing that. And same with the front. Just broken that down to pull all the bearings out. I've got some new bearings coming. So at a minimum, the hub will be clean. 
I'm going to get them to uh, run the vapor blaster over the spokes just to see and at least it won't look shitty rust so like I say I haven't done wheels before or tanks <laughs> or seats so it's all a big learning experience for me so um, I've just got to make the best of what I've got so that's the plan there we'll just see see how we go so um, I've got the forks partly disassembled here all the gunk is draining out of it see there's some pretty good looking stuff there one had half decent oil one had just milk milk and gunk and not much in it so um, I've got the seals and the dust covers for those so the plan with that is finish disassembling them send the, the bodies to be uh, vapor blasted so they'll come back all nice Maybe give them a bit of a polish, just to give them a little bit of a shine, because they're kind of, you know, like just a, a tube really. So they'll be, they've got some nice straight sections that can go on the, the buffing wheel without too much problems. Uh, we'll see how that comes up. Any little bit of shine is going to look better than that. So it's all sort of details, you know. It, all helps so uh, that's the plan with those right so let's look at these rear shocks they're a bit of a mess that doesn't look too bad on camera but oh, it's just washing it out actually that's better I've wire wheeled this because it was, well, I'll show you the other one. That was after. This is before. So, uh, that's pretty tragic as well. And these are from 1975, so uh, not only do they look like shit, but they're probably not going to work too well either. So I guess I could buy, I'm not going to be buying Hagen or anything for this one, because this is a build on a budget. So, I mean this bike, it's a 185, so it's for around town, so I'm not going to be doing... 100 miles an hour on it uh, in a straight line perhaps if it'll go that fast but uh, it's not going to be anything more than an around towner and maybe a bit of a weekend fun bike nostalgic sort of bike so probably and you can buy shocks for reasonable price I don't want to sort of get the China ones although you just don't know where they come from these days but that's the plan uh, we'll bang them on and that should suffice but these will do just for the moment to get it back on its wheels still got the swing arm to go back in there um, mud guards to clean up I've got the uh, bottom yoke on the bearings are all greased up and ready to go so uh, yep got my top yoke here I'll give that a clean up give it a paint and then that can go on the forks themselves I didn't show this before but it's soaked in oil a bit but they are pretty rusted so um, yeah look at that it's terrible. It's just one thing after the other on this bike. So um, you can see the repair bill could just go sky high. So uh, I'll do some work on those. 
I don't think I'll, I'd love to just go and get them re-chromed or replace them, but same thing again, build on a budget. The idea will be smooth them off so that the seals don't get torn up by the uh, pitting and so on. And, well, I'll just, I've got a bit of an idea on what I can do with them. And if it works, I'll tell you all about it. If it doesn't, well, maybe I'll still tell you all about it, but it'll be, don't do it like this sort of story. Yeah, look, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's just going to, a new set of seals is going to just rip the hell out of that. I mean, that's corrosion and corrosion, cor corrosion, um, bulges sort of, you know, it expands. So that's sitting high. So if I wire wheel all that off, it'll make it low. It'll be pitting, but at least it's um, not going to graunch against the uh, the seals. So it's just a matter of filling in the pitting. If the, uh, the forks don't travel that far, it's not going to matter because the seal doesn't travel over that. So I might be able to just cosmetic it up somewhat. Either way... It's not going to be rusty. The seals aren't going to get cut up. It's going to look presentable. It's going to have new seals and dust caps. It's going to have new oil. So it's that's as good as it's going to get on a budget build. So I've uh, got the pipes sitting down there. So everything's sort of in the shed at the moment. It's winter in Australia, so... Um, Plus I had a rent inspection, so <laughs> I had to quickly hide everything away. So, um, yeah, we're getting there. So uh, that's it for the moment. And uh, very time consuming, this motorbike restoration stuff. But uh, I guess any sort of restoration is time consuming. Um, this is uh, all a really cool experience for me. I'm... It's kind of a labour of love. I'm enjoying seeing this. I can't wait. I mean, that <laughs> that uh, frame was tragic as well. So, And uh, there's no prize for counting up how many times I've said tragic in this video, by the way. But I'm really enthusiastic to see how that tank turns out. It's going to look pretty good no matter what. And hanging out for that engine there to go into there. And for one day for it to make a noise, ring the ning ning sort of noise. So, um, okay, well, I'll show you more as things happen. And until then, I um, hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you all again soon. See ya.